Hey guys, welcome back to wall.com. So today we got a very special episode for you. A while back we did a stick versus TIG versus MIG versus flux core video and a lot of people said that it wasn't fair. So today we're actually gonna go, we're gonna go through and we're gonna test three different types of wire. I have Jerry Matheson here with, um, from Select Arc, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna test solid wire. We're gonna put that against flux core and put both of those against metal core and see which wire performs the best. We're gonna test what, electrode efficiency, the melt off rate, we're going to keep everything the same as far as amperage, right? You said amperage yep. is that's yep. like the main component. We're going to keep amperage as close as we can get it. That way, everything's tested on the same level. And we just want to find out, you know, which has the best deposition rate and electrode efficiency. So this would be very good for people that are con uh, considering their to go off for their certified welding supervisor or, you know, in some cases, certified welding inspector. Or if you're a business owner and you want to find out, you know, where can I save money? Where can I increase my productivity? and decrease some of my costs. Exactly. Um, so we, we went ahead, we prepared three samples, one for each type of electrode that we're gonna use. They're a one foot piece. We're gonna do, we're gonna weigh those before, uh, we're gonna weigh them after, and then we're gonna weigh the spools before and weigh the spools after. And we got some cool formulas that's uh, actually used in the welding industry to calculate a lot of these things. So you guys will be able to follow along at the house, uh, grab your calculator, pen, paper. It's gonna be a episode full of math, so it's always fun. So let's go ahead and get into it. We're gonna start off with solid wire. So a typical 70S6 and all the wires are 045 diameter. So we're gonna start off with our first sample. We're gonna run everything on a tractor. So the travel speed's gonna be the same, contact tip to work distance, um, work angle, everything's gonna be the same. We're just testing the wires and their efficiency. So ready to get into it? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. All right, so we have our very uh, highly sophisticated board here that we're gonna be tracking all the results on. Jerry, what's some of the uh, the variables that we want to kind of be cognizant of as we go through this? Well, the one thing, uh, as you mentioned earlier, uh, we want to try and keep the amperage uh, level the same and the stick out the same. Uh, as everyone knows, if you increase your stick out, tip the work distance, your resistance level goes up. So you'll have to increase wire feed speed. You end up with a higher deposition rate. So keeping that constant, we get uh, an even measurement across the board. Uh, we do record our wire feed speed. In uh, our travel speed, uh, we have a calculation for the heat input as well. And as you mentioned earlier, the three things we're really looking at is the deposition rate, the electrode efficiency, and the melt-off rate. Just to maintain um, contact tip to work distance so it's equal across the board, everything's going to be set at uh, three-quarters of an inch electro or contact tip to work distance. Uh, for the solid wire, we're going to be running a spray transfer, 90-10 gas. The flux core, we're going to be running 100% CO2, and then the metal core is again, we're going to be running 90-10 on that. Uh, both of those, or all three of these are going to be set at 40 cubic feet per hour when we're running this. So again, try to keep everything as, uh, as close to each other as possible. All right, so before we get into this, there's a couple formulas we're, we're going to be using to calculate um, how well this wire is performing over another wire. So the first one we're going to calculate is heat input. How much heat are we actually putting into the material? While, that, while we're running that, uh, that process. So to do that, we're gonna multiply volts times amps times 60. We're gonna divide that by our travel speed in inches per minute. That's gonna give us joules per inch. Next one is our deposition rate. We're gonna do the weight of the weld. Uh, we figure out the weight of the weld by weighing the plate before and after. So we'll get the weight of the weld on here. The arc time, or divide that by the arc time in seconds. Multiply that by 3,600. That'll give us pounds per hour. The next one is the efficiency of the electrode. How much of that spool is actually being converted into weld metal? Percentage of efficiency, we're going to take the weight of the welded plate, subtract that from the original plate without the weld on it, and then um, and we, we did that because we'll, we'll have the, uh, the weight of that plate before and after the weld. And then we're going to divide that by the spool weight before we weld minus the spool weight after, and that'll give us a percentage. Um, so that'll be the percent of efficiency of that specific wire. And I think you'll see a big difference between the, uh, the three different types of wires that we have. You kind of agree with that? Yeah, I do, especially the, uh, the gas shield of flux core on CO2. I think we'll see a pretty, pretty good size difference between the solid wire, metal core, and then the flux core. Okay, and then uh, the last one we're gonna look at is the melt-off rate. And that is the, uh, the spool weight before minus the spool weight after. We're gonna divide that by the arc time in, uh, in seconds. And then we're gonna multiply that one also by 3,600. That'll give us a melt-off rate in pounds per hour. We'll record all that on the other side of the board, and then once we get done with all three different processes, we can kind of 
uh, just look at the variables and how everything stacks up against one another and then we'll be able to determine. And then we'll talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of each wire. There's going to be specific times that, you know, one's going to perform better than the other depending on your environment and all that that you're working on. Let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so Jerry's going to be over there. He's running all of our, um, he's going to be checking our volts using a voltmeter because I don't want to rely on the numbers on the machine. So we're going to get uh, more accurate that way. This one, we're going to be hitting about 29 volts, uh, 400 inches a minute on the wire feed speed and about 11 and a half inches per minute on the travel speed. Everything's going to be mechanized. All right, so what, what are we running for uh, volts on this one? Uh, we're at uh, 29 volts on that, and as you could hear, there was no short circuiting. So you're in a true spray transfer where there's no short circuiting. Uh, a lot of mechanized systems will run this. Most of your uh, semi-automatic operations, they run somewhere between that, uh, a little bit lower voltage. They like that arc length a little shorter, and the energy of the pinch effect so they can travel a little bit faster. But for the purpose of uh, deposition, we're going to run uh, as close to true as we can for, for all of them. So there's no crackling, there's no spitting just, and popping and Just a hissing noise. Okay, so that, that wire is actually never physically touching the puddle at all? Once the arc is initiated, no. Okay, cool. So, um, so what's next? What do we have to do now? Uh, now we have to uh, weigh the welded plate and then uh, retract the wire. If we have to clip the wire to take it off, we have to save that wire that we clip and weigh what wire is left. Okay, so spool. any of that, any wire that was snipped off when we were setting the wire up, goes or when back we take on the it scale. back, goes back on the scale with yep. it, so that's not a loss. That's right. Okay, let's go ahead, we'll pull the plate, get it on the scale, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and rewind the spool, get that on the scale, and uh, see what we have for a difference. Okay. All right, 30.050. All right, go ahead and get this one off the scale, and we're gonna pull the, uh, the other spool, get that weighed up, and then we'll get those final uh, numbers and we'll go ahead and put it into the formula. All right, go ahead and uh, toss that spool up there, Jerry. And here's the, uh, the wire that we clipped off. There you go, little feller. Nine, All right, so we're at point? 9504. 9.502. 02. All right, we got everything weighed out. We're gonna go ahead and plug in the numbers, run the formulas, come up with our final calculations, and then we'll switch everything over from flux core. We'll reconduct the same test. Flux score gas shielded. All right, so we went ahead and uh, recorded all the results. 29 volts, 270 amps, 400 inches a minute, 11.75 uh, on the travel speed, and that's inches per minute as well. The heat input, 39.98 kilojoules. What we did is we got uh, 39,980 and some change. We just converted that to kilojoules by multiplying it by 1,000. Uh, the deposition rate, we're running about 10 and a half pounds per hour with this specific 70S6. 045 diameter spray transfer mode. Uh, electrode efficiency is 97.8%. So that means if I started off with 100 pounds of this, this spool, 97.8 of that would be converted into weld metal. The other 2.2 uh, pounds would be uh, lost in either fume or weld spatter. But since we're running spray transfer, that's uh, pretty much just gonna be lost in fume. Melt off rate, 10.7 pounds. Um, so I think we're pretty good here. We're gonna go ahead and get into the flux core gas shielded. Uh, we'll get the spool weighed, get the sample weighed, get everything hooked up, and then we'll come back and uh, do a little bit of welding on that. All right, so we've got the plate weighed, we got the spool weighed, spool's hooked up in here. We're gonna go ahead and run the flux core uh, gas shielded. Same test, we've got a one foot uh, specimen here. We're gonna run it, same travel speed. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, attempt for the same amperage. Uh, we're ready to go. Get it cleaned up, get it weighed, we'll pull that spool, get that one weighed, uh, and then we'll get all the results recorded and move on to the metal port. Sounds good. Twenty-eight 
29.848. All right, go ahead and pull this off and then we'll get the, uh, the spool wire up on here. Here's the spool. And then we got two little off cuts. Put that on there. All right, so we are at 35.432. All right, we got this weighed out. We're going to go ahead, we'll factor out the calculations, get those recorded on the board, and then we'll go ahead and uh, switch over to the metal core. All right, so again, we're hitting around 20, or we're hitting 29 volts, 275 amps on this run, so about five amps higher than the previous. Like I said, it's approximate. We're getting as close as we can with the, uh, the given wire feed speed. Uh, wire feed speed on this one was uh, another 400 inches a minute. Travel speed, 11 and three quarters, or 11.75, because again, we're using the tractor, so all that's going to stay constant. Heat input this time is 40.723 kilojoules, so just a little bit more heat input for the, um, the amperage and the travel speed that we're working with and the volts. Deposition rate, 7.5 pounds per hour, so um, we got a, a decrease of about three pounds per hour switching from uh, a solid wire to a flux cord gas shielded. Electrode efficiency dropped down to 84.46 pounds. Now you have to consider, because we have a cord flux on the inside of the wire, we're gonna lose additional weight to that flux. Once, you know, once it's done its job, we chip it off and get rid of it. That's weight that we're losing that was once inside of that wire. And then our melt off rate dropped a little bit down to 8.88 pounds per hour. We're gonna go ahead and get everything set up for the metal core and run that. I'm interested to see how metal core does. I haven't done a whole lot of metal core other than doing some uh, demo videos here and a little bit out in the field but not completely my background. So I wanna see how that kind of stacks up between these other two wires. All right, good bead appearance overall. Once again, um, you'll notice it probably looks a little funny on camera. It caught me off guard. These are just the uh, the silicon islands, very similar to a regular solid wire. It's all the silicon silicon just floats to the top, so that's not porosity. We don't have any porosity in there. It's a nice smooth bead. We're gonna go ahead, throw this back up on the scale, throw the wire on the scale, and see where this one performs as far as the uh, the formulated or formulations we're looking at right now. All right, 30.148. Throw the wire up here, and then we have the clips. We have the little pieces of wire that came off during, you know, setting it up. We're at 11.824. All right, we'll go ahead and get this off to the side. We'll go ahead and run the formulations, put them up on the board, and then we'll kind of determine uh, which one's best overall with this test. All right, so for metal core, uh, we're running this one about 25.5 volts and we hit about 285 amps approximate with that at 440 inches a minute. Same travel speed, once again, we're on the tractor. Heat input, we, uh, we dropped a little heat input, okay? So 37.11 kilojoules, uh, which is pretty good because I'm not putting any excess heat into the part. Uh, so a little less warpage, things like that when we're going over longer pieces. Uh, deposition rate, we're de actually depositing about 10.92 pounds per hour. Uh, so that's higher than the other ones, even though we have a little bit higher amperage. This is it's rather difficult to get the wire to run effectively and maintain the same amperage, but as you can see, they're all relatively close to one another. There's no extremes one end or the other. Uh, the deposition rate, we just covered that. Electrode efficiency, we're hitting 98.9%. So about 99% of that wire that's coming off of that spool is being deposited, so it's not being lost to any flux like we saw here or any weld spatter, smoke and fumes like we saw on the, um, the solid wire. And then melt off, uh, we're hitting about 10.6 pounds, which is just a little bit less than the uh, solid wire. So Jerry, kind of walk us through um, some of the things you see as far as advantages and disadvantages of these three wires, just from you know your experience. Okay, sure. I think uh, what this shows us, uh, uh, first off, number one, uh, looking at 045 wire and welding on the plate that we we're welding on, having clean material, if there's a large percentage of the work that someone's doing in their shop that's flat and horizontal or easily positioned into the flat and horizontal, uh, it kind of X's this out, okay? The flux core. The flux core. Okay. Unless, of course, they're welding on uh, heavy mill scale, uh, heavy oxide plate or has some rust on it, 
uh, then there is a distinct advantage for the flux core to tolerate those things. But what you gain in that, you see you, you, you're losing here in the efficiency. So, uh, you know, there's an application for it, but uh, if your shop is doing predominantly flat and horizontal work, uh, then you're looking at, you know, you get to these two, the solid wire and the metal core. And in all honesty, I think uh, when you're, if you're welding with solid wire and you're trying to be most cost effective, uh, it, leans, it leans its way towards metal core. You see the efficiency there is, we only see 1%, but we only welded for a minute. Uh, the arc time was one minute. So mm -hmm. Uh, basically what you're coming down to is because of the current density difference that transfer is a finer globule which you can you can see a little bit of that in the video but the reality of it is because it's a smaller globule um, it doesn't have a tendency to spatter as much and where you're gaining on the kilojoules is you're able to run at uh, considerably lower voltage and still get in that spray satisfactorily so that you're not getting excess voltage uh, and or, or or spatter so that uh, that brings your efficiency up I think uh, in a shop where you're doing all flat and horizontals today um, it's either solid or metal core I think that's the that's the clear winner here now if we're going let's say we're getting out of position because you had mentioned you know if we're just doing flat and horizontal once we get out of position what's something that we're going to want to consider well I think uh, you know given modern technology and the fact that you can use the solid and the metal core in the pulse mode and weld out of position or in a short circuit transfer which isn't anywhere near as efficient right um, it makes them a player in terms of pulse but let's say you have the average guy on a you know a tight budget doesn't want to you know put a lot of capital into equipment it makes flux core a viable option for welding out of position if he has a part that he can't position or he can't get in the flat or horizontal he has to weld the way it's sitting um, this is, in my opinion, this is obviously the winner because it's most cost effective. So if you're limited to like your trans or you know your traditional just CV only machine um, with an external or internal wire feed, that's probably going to be your best bet if you have to go out of position. The exactly. other two, you're going to be able to run flat and horizontal all day long on a on a regular CV machine, uh, but without getting into uh, pulse spray, you're going to going to kind of be limited to that flux. Growth. Especially you'd mentioned short circuit. I know we've said before. 5 sixteenths or less is what you're going to want to run your solid wires on. Don't try going up 3 eighths yeah, or anything you, heavy. You know, switch over to a metal core or try to get it in You just don't have the position. energy. The energy right. is, is not enough uh, to, to warrant a good penetration profile or cross-section getting enough uh, a burn off to dig into the base plate. The other option, of course, is, and people are doing this, is to go with a flux core wire that's approved for slightly higher argon. You have some flux core wires out there in the market that can run at 85% argon. So then you can run your metal core or solid wire, your flat and horizontals, and you have a machine or two in a large shop set up for your uh, flux core, or you do all your flats and horizontals, take your spool of solid wire or metal core off, put your spool of flux core on, weld your verticals. Mm -hmm. It's the best of both worlds. Okay. Well, cool. Um, Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go ahead and try running these calculations for yourself. I had a lot of fun doing it, kind of learning some of the, uh, the cool stuff that you can do with different formulas, kind of weld nerding out a little bit today. So, Jerry, thanks for your time. Thanks for coming out and kind of explaining this to viewers. Uh, we definitely appreciate you guys' uh, support. Um, go ahead, ask us if you, if you have any questions in the uh, comment sections. Go ahead, feel free to ask them there. And until next time, make your world better than your last.